The first true power tool was not invented until 60 years after this arch was completed. They tell us this was crafted by hand. Is that even possible? And then there is the ceiling of the arch. Immaculate, 3D sculpted roses, perfect in their geometric symmetry. The nuance of the detail and finesse of each petal and cross-section borders is overwhelming. Look at the rest of Paris during this time. Again, a plethora of unbelievable, gigantic and magnificent structures. The city's infrastructure glorious and the people and their means of transport primitive, unsophisticated and seeming not at all developed to the point of producing a city like this. The roads are improperly paved and uneven. They are dirty and muddy. We also see buildings during this period in which the architecture aligns with the inhabitants. Buildings of misshapen proportions, less developed and refined, charming in their own way, but coarse in their use of wood and plaster. This is exactly the type of architecture we expect of a generation of horse and cart, a generation ignorant to the discoveries in technology that would follow in the years to come. Furthermore, at the time of this photograph, the arch is roughly 40 years old since its completion. Yet can you see how worn some of the parts of the structure are? We see weathering on the stone that suggests the arch is much older. As we approach the late 19th century, we see that the people of Moscow have finally decided to leave their homes and venture out into the streets. The infamous Red Square, now bustling with life. St. Basil's Cathedral and the Spaskaya Tower dominate the frame of the square. The construction of St. Basil's Cathedral began in 1555 and was completed in 1561, a mere six years. It suffered a huge fire in 1737.